with the release of Sword and Shield on the 15th of November, I've jumped onto my sketch pad, put together three new designs for you to represent your Team Starter, Team Skull Bunny, Rookie Gang, or Team Sobel. Hop over to the Teespring store now. You can grab a 10% discount with the discount code STARTER. Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon BGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today on the channel we're going to be continuing on with this team that we kicked off with in yesterday's episode. If you missed yesterday's episode and you'd like to check it out, I'll pop a card up here for you. You can go back and check yesterday's episode out before coming into this one because it was a cracking episode. It was a great one for us to kick off with this week. So uh, there was an amazing moment with Tapu Koko in our game too that I would suggest if you haven't seen it, go and miss. Um, but getting on to the team, as always, it is down in the description below. There is a link to the actual team report from Yuki that we're playing this week. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it yesterday. I'm looking forward to exploring a few more of the elements of the team, like the Comet or particularly, and maybe making a bit more use of the Crawbat. But without further ado, let's get into it today. Let's get some music on. And as always, my friends, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and... Um, Leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this team, on this particular build. If it's your favorite Zerndon build or if you prefer a little bit more of a, a standard variant or if you've got a favorite Pokemon that you like playing with this restricted pair. Anything I would love to hear from you. And um, obviously, keep on coming with the the team. The team that you are. I want to know which you are. If you team Skull Bunny like myself. Because I'm, I'm a traitor. I'm a traitor, I've been told. I'm the person that makes Sobel cry because I change teams. But I just, I, the bunny and the fire, it's just too attractive. Are you Grookey Gang or are you the Sobel Squad or Team Sobel, whatever, whichever one you are, let me know down below. I would love to hear. Anyway, we are going into our first battle. We've got a first opponent, pretty high rated Japanese player, so we'll get into team preview. And they are running a team of Rayquaza, Kyoga, Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini. Incineroar and Ferrothorn. Don't know why I've got the cinematic voice coming on today. It's like this summer coming to it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll pack it in. I'll be I'll be serious. It's the last week on the channel doing the Ultra series. We've got to have a little bit of fun. Okay, so we've got Ray Olga, standard kind of call. We've got Tapu Koko support there, really good because it offers the terrain support. It's obviously a very fast pivot as well to help alongside that Kyogre get the Rayquaza in overwrite the weather so you can spam your water type attacks potentially got speed control there with electric web we've got to be careful of that Tapu Fini is another one with speed control you've got the standard Incineroar support there it's just good and it just offers fake out support intimidate support it's a fire dark type it's just generally very good and then the ferret thorn stuck on the end as a trick room kind of counter um the one thing i would say is making use of our speed control would be quite good but we've got to be very careful of the type of cocoa gengar is going to be quite nice for us here it does well against the majority of the team um so gengar i think we'll bring do we want to bring coma all here mm, maybe we're gonna to have to quickly quickly tap in with everything i don't know why i'm bringing I don't know why I'm bringing the coma at all. <laughs> I don't know why I'm bringing it. There's a Rayquaza there. It's going to just stomp on us with Dragon Ascent. But you never know. We can maybe pressure part of the team. There's two Tapus as well. So it's like literally the worst Pokemon to bring to this game. But we were rushed. It's our own fault. But we were rushed. So we'll get into it. At least we are bringing the comma or we did say in yesterday's episode we'd like to explore the team a bit more. We said it today again, you know, we'd like to see how it does and Oh, it's not doing so well, is it? It's not doing so well. But but it's fine, it's fine. It's alright. We've got to watch out for the fairy and on the Coco, of course, the dazzle as well. The or everything on the Rayquaza. Um I think the one thing that if I'm my opponent, I kind of want to get rid of the the Gengar as soon as possible because it can it can restrict our ability to, their ability to uh, to take advantage of the weather. I'm going to Mega Evolve with Gengar. Obviously, I'm going to protect though this turn. Do I switch in or do I just go for the Z move and just go crazy? Um, I feel like I kind of want to just Z move it. Really, I'm going to just I'm going to do it. We have to cut the Z move, of course, because it is copywritten. And um, but. Are we cheeky enough to get the Z move off? I mean, I feel like it's going to go terribly wrong, but it might go really well, so we'll see. 
Uh, we'll Mega Evolve, get a lovely shiny Gengar onto the field, and the Rayquaza are going to pop up, turn into Mega Rayquaza, and uh, start doing some stuff. I mean, if we can catch it with a Z move. Depending on its build, it might go down. Gengar Protect, yeah. He could have targeted it into the Coco and went for the Speed Tie, but. What's the. Okay, okay. This isn't all bad. I mean, they've probably targeted the Gengar with this and then just drag ascended into. Uh, drag ascended. Dragon ascended into the Coma Or. That would be my best bet. <laughs> so here's the Z move. Unless they're gone into the Coma Or. Now nah, they're gone into the Gengar. Of course they are. They want to get rid of it. Come on. Don't attack. Don't attack us. Draco Meteor. No! You've got Draco Meteor and you've got a Tapu Fini on your team. You're mad. You're a mad man. Okay, well, the Rayquaza is pretty useless now because of that drop. Well, I mean, it's not really, is it? It's still got Dragon Ascent, so it's got the other Spectrum. <sighs> All right, right. Well, what we could potentially do is, is just zone our way out of this mess. Um, do we do it? Or do we go Groudon? I mean, we could go Xerneas and get a Geomancy up. I feel like we can win a speed tie against the Coco. We've got to do something here. I don't really feel like I want to play like carefully with this team either. I feel like I'm really reckless with it. <laughs> it's probably a real bad drawback. Let's go for the speed tie, which we've already said we didn't want to go for. Go sludge bomb there. And let's get that fat Geomancy up with uh, with Xerneas. Come on, Gengar, win the tie. Come on, you know you can do it, Gengar. You know it. You know you want to. Oh, why? Why? Ah, oh, and that does so much damage as well. This is like the weakest Xerneas ever. Ah, come on. Come on. Not getting any breaks. And now we're going to go down. Ah, oh, of course. Yeah. It's a brilliant switch by my opponent, but I mean... <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, what? What can I say? Yeah, we'll, we'll lose. Oh, Gengar. Bye-bye, Gengar. Yeah. But, I know, from 2016, okay, I had to train my Ferrothorn a particular way to take an Earth Power and a Moonblast. And you had to have a lot of bulk. It had to be sassy, you had to have a lot of bulk in there. Because I remember that was one of the criteria in my 2016 team. If anyone remembers the the original Assault Vest Rayquaza back back in the day, um, it was one of the things I did with my Ferrothorn because I always kind of got in a position where I was like out in front of a, a Groudon, I could overwrite the weather with Kyogre's Rain and the Primordial Sea, but I could never get around the Earth Power Moonblast. So that was a that was a definite thing that I looked at. Um, to make sure I could calc, and I don't think my opponent here is going to be able to calc against that. Uh, I think we'll pick up the Ferrothorn with a Moonblast and an Earth Power, and I can see the Kyogre coming in on that Rayquaza slot, 100%. We'll double the Ferrothorn, I think we've got to, tie in all our attention. Now our opponent could see through this and just protect the Ferrothorn, and um, yeah... I mean, it's going to be... I mean, if we get the Ferrothorn, it helps. It's still going to be really difficult to deal with a Rayquaza and a Kyogre. Not so much the Tapu Koko. I, I feel like we're set up really well against the Tapu Koko. Like, bring us all the Tapu Kokos in the world and we'll, we'll, we'll nuke them. It's Tapu Koko coming back in. And oh, Ferrothorn protects. Okay, well, it's it's... I mean, we could have erupted there, but it's so risky, like, thinking that the, the Kyogre's going to come in. Have they brought Kyogre? They've got to have brought Kyogre, right? You just don't not bring Kyogre to this matchup. Now we can go for the Earth Power and the Moonblast here. Or do we go Dazzle and go Eruption? Mm, does the Coco switch out? I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like that play... No, we have to go for it. We have to go for it because I just even if the Rayquaza comes in, it's fine. You take that down. We we have to go for it. Here comes the Kyogre. Yeah, like I don't know why that wasn't the initial switch, but my opponent kind of scouting out what we're going to do. But if they don't take this, we're back in the game. 
At least. Yeah, we should be. We should be back. The thing is, it's going to be difficult still because the Rayquaza is probably a salt vest. I think with the, the, the set that it has. We're modest as well, so we should do just down to an earth power. Come on, Groudon. Do it. Please do it for me. Come on, Groudon. <laughs> we can still do this. We can still do it. It's fine. Okay. We've still got to deal with a Kyogre in front of our Groudon. It's a special Groudon. It's not so hot. But if we can get the opportunity to double into the Kyogre, it might be what we need. I'm just wary that the Tapu Koko will might see a Protect on the Kyogre. But at the same time, I'm going to Earth Power Kyogre and I'm going to Dazzle. I don't think that will be enough to get the Kyogre, but it kind of covers the Protect, and the Dazzle should get the Tapu Koko anyway. Okay, we get the Koko. I don't think an Earth Power is going to be enough to get this Kyogre. Really don't. Come on, crit or something. <laughs> Please, Water Spout, Origin Balls. And... Ah, can't even miss. Should have Moonblasted. But then we take an attack from Coco, so we're kind of in a similar position. And now Extreme Speed's gonna do its thing and uh, clean this one up. And I mean, after such a terrible start, and uh, Coma all, oh, you know, I'm gonna say it now. I just, I've never, I've never seen how Coma all works in this format. And I'm not saying it anything bad because you know what? It's it's just one of those. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to Moonblast this Rayquaza because in case it doesn't go for the extreme speed. It's blatantly going to and the Kyogre might protect, but no, it's not going to happen. The Kyogre could miss if we hang on. Not going to happen. Um, no, but the one thing is, Komo has no right being in this, this matchup. I don't know why I clicked it in. The team preview, we rushed through it. I'm going to hold my hands up and say it was our mistake, but we did all right to kind of bring it back and we... we got the KO on the Ferrothorn, which is all that matters, right? It's all that matters! It's all that matters. Okay. And excuse the hat. I've literally just got in from work. I cycle home like seven miles and it was freezing tonight. And it's the first time this evening on my cycle that it's been pitch black dark as soon as I left, which is really depressing. It's not depressing, it's just like a, you know, like it's so nice cycling when it's light. And it's just, yeah, it's not so nice when it's dark. And it's been really cold today. Really cold, like freezing cold. Like cold, I have like these thermal gloves that I wear when I'm cycling. Picture it, picture it. They're great, they're huge. They look like, like I don't know, I'm like sausage fingers all over. Um, but... It was so cold, like my hands are actually like painfully cold through the gloves. So I'm figuring it must have been like super cold. Anyway, we got KC up next, so we've got another Ray to deal with, but we'll hop into team preview and see what we can do. KC running a team of I've got a friend called KC. Uh he is running a team of it's not it's not my friend, um, but he is running a team or she is running a team of Xerneas Rayquaza. Amoongus, Cartana, Incineroar, and Tapu Fini. So, uh, kind of standard X-Ray call. Uh, the only difference is you're seeing kind of the double grass type there that you wouldn't generally see. Uh, the Cartana would normally be um, a Nihiligo, but I do like the inclusion of Cartana here. It does give you the team an option of speed control, which I think it's one thing this team really does lack and has lacked throughout the format to really give it that extra dimension. So, if the Cartana has got Tailwind, can prove quite useful here because it's not so reliant on the icy wind support from the type of finny or the geomancying from the xerneas straight away i'm gonna say that we're not bringing coma or to this match i am bringing the gengar though for sure um hmm we do want to bring xerneas i definitely want to bring groudon and what's our last Pokemon? Do we want a Moongus? Do we want Crobat? Crobat could be nice if my opponent gets set up. Um, and there's not really much on my opponent's team that can really threaten the Crobat too heavily. Uh, the other thing is the, the Flying Nium Z might be useful for something like a Moongus late game. So we'll lock in. And we'll go with that. And we'll see how we get on. 
But we're gonna get a win. I feel like this is the one. This is the one. We're gonna get a win. It's the, the standard at the minute, isn't it? It's like win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Although we had that great episode on Friday where we had the Groudon just four on one. If you haven't seen that, you need to go back and check last Friday's episode. It is titled four v one or something like that, or four on one. I don't know. Um, but it, yeah, it's 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 pretty good. Uh, you need to go check check it out. It's uh, it, it's like the best boy Groudon <laughs> doing his thing. It's great. Anyway, we need to concentrate on this match because we've got that standard Xerneas Incineroar lead from my opponent. Um, hmm. Do we just protect Gengar or do we just go for the taunt? I think we're probably better off just going Mega Evolve. Let's go for a taunt into the Xerneas. They may switch out. Um, and we'll try our luck and get a Geomancy up now. Because if Tapu Finny comes in and we get the Geomancy up, ooh, it's Cartana. Don't mind this too much either. Um, but we may just see a fake out from the Incineroar. You've got to think as well that we might see a raw uh, Snarl. Is he moving to Gengar? Who knows? But at least if that Cartana has got Tailwind, like we were talking about before, we've shut that down. We do get the Geomancy up. It's kind of making me feel like this Incineroar has got raw. Please don't have Raw. Oh, don't have Raw. <laughs> totally ruins everything. Although we would be able to get Groudon in, which has a pretty good time against both these Pokemon. Yeah. There he is. Come on, Groudon, come in. Yeah, there's the boy. He's like, need anything to that deer. That deer's useless. <laughs> Let me handle it. Let me take down these boys. Right, okay. So I think what we will do is we'll double tap the Incineroar. We'll go for an eruption and a sludge bomb into that slot. We're probably not going to take the Incineroar down though doing that, which is the other thing. Um, the only thing we could potentially do, like the Cartana can't protect either. Um, we could just Icy Wind and then go for an Earth Power. I just want to get rid of the Incineroar and it's not going to go down to it. Like, it's not going to go down. Uh, I'm going to go... Sludge Bomb, and I'm going to go Eruption. I want to get rid of this Cartana. We could Sludge Bomb and then Earth Power, but the thing is... It's not going to take the Incineroar down. And getting the chip onto it, getting rid of the Cartana. That's a better move here, and it's not Sash, so that's a good indicator. Uh, we'll probably take an attack from the Incineroar now. You turn. That's not the worst thing in the world. Um... And the Gengar's still proving to be a bit of an issue for my opponent because without being able to deal with it effectively, um, we still threaten the likes of Xerneas pretty hard. Now the Rayquaza coming in does change a few things, um, but we do have Crobat still, so we could bring Crobat back in. Um, we do have it on Xerneas, uh, so I think we need to watch out for um, potentially the Z move on Incineroar as well. Uh, it could have it there, but I, I honestly don't think it does. I think with Raw, I think you probably drop in the Dark type attack. It would make the most sense. Um, hmm, did we just reposition ourselves? Um, I think you target the Gengar here. Um, but then you've got to turn to fake out from the Groudon. Do you just bring in? I think we bring in Crobat right now. Because then we can set up a Tailwind and put ourselves, hopefully, in a, in a good driving seat. I don't know. Yeah, but we've got my opponent like kind of pinned in here anyway, so it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Okay, Sunlight going to fade away as we switch out and Crobat hits the field and Rayquaza, of course. I'm going to go for that Mega Evolution, not hanging around. First up and get ready to chuck out some big damage. Imagine you want to go for. I'm hoping that it's an assault vest variant, which is kind of what you see generally on these teams. It could be a sword stance variant. And if we're allowing the sword stance to go up now, it wouldn't be the best. Uh, but we are just seeing an Earth Pie into Gengar and a U turn into Gengar. So doubling up there. Um, okay. Now we could. I really want to keep Gengar around for later on. I'm going to bring in Xerneas. And I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for the Tailwind. My opponent can't really switch out, and if they got Earth Power into Gengar again, that's fine. 
<clears throat> Re revealing that it has protect. Okay, so that's that's better for us, really. Way better. And we'll probably see another U-turn come out from the Incineral. Oh, it caused Flare Blitz this time. Into Crobat. Yeah, trying to get some damage onto it. Not strong enough. Uh, but a Moonblast will take that Incineral down now. Um, and a Moonblast will probably do quite a decent number. I'm not really worried about the Incineral, to be honest. I'm more worried about the, the Rayquaza. I'm going to I'm gonna go for the, uh, the Z-Move. We'll go Z-Move and we'll go Moonblast into the Ray. And let's make sure that we take it down. Come on, camera. Don't do this. Why are you not focusing? Focus! Uh, and if the Xerneas comes in and requires his place, then, I mean, we pick up a KO. I think either way, so... We're going to take down a Restrict. Unless you get a Double Protect. Like, that's the only thing. And I don't think it's worth risking at this point. But here we go. Supersonic Sky Strike. Haven't used the Z-Move in such a long time. So nice to see it. And uh, Crobat gonna do. It'll be interesting to see how much this does. I'd say about 50%, maybe. Like, Crobat's not the weakest of Pokemon. Very far, so. Same type attack bonus we're gonna get with this, so. Yeah, hopefully 50%. I'd be happy with that. Whoa, Mo, Mo, you're, you're outstanding. Literally, like, doing up and above Crobat. Really? <laughs> Taking the game to my opponent. We're gonna see you turn potentially. Yeah. Um, so my opponent's got the the fake out and Geomancy boost, um, but at the same time it doesn't really matter um, too much because you cannot fake out a Crobat, um, unfortunately for my opponent because of its magical inner focus ability, this magical purple bat has. I don't know why it's so magical, it'd be great to have like a I'm gonna say it. Everything gets a fairy typing, doesn't it? I don't know. What typing would you like to see on Crobat? Hmm. What typing would be good on it? I wouldn't really want to take away its flying type. The poison's really good as well, actually. I wouldn't actually change it, I don't think. Uh, you'd have to change it completely. Like, maybe electric flying could be good, but then its use against, like, fairies wouldn't be as good. So we'll just keep it. We'll keep it. It makes more sense to do that. Could we go for the double geo? in this match. Do some showboating. Ah, I don't think so. I mean, we could try it, couldn't we? Um, and go for a cheeky old taunt into the Xerneas. I think we'll get faked out here into our Xerneas, to be honest. We'll probably just get attacked. Faked out. Yep. And we'll get the taunt. So that's fine. I mean, at least we're denying our opponents. Geomancy. The thing is, we could have been a bit smarter and just protected there, but they have actually went for the Geomancy. Um, they can't protect now, so we can just um, Super Fang Moonblast, and that, I think, probably should put the Xerneas... Uh, my pick up the knockout, but we're never going to know because the forfeit comes out, and good game, KC, but uh, I told you, I told you, it was one win, one loss today, it's always the way it goes on a, a Tuesday, it's just the, the Tuesday bump, isn't it? Anyway, my friends, I'm sorry, I'll stop, I'll be serious for a minute, thank you so much for tuning in, I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode, it's been a bit mad, uh, especially the Como All game, game one. Why we brought that, I have no idea. I'll be still thinking about that tomorrow morning when I come back to do some more recording for this week. Um, but like I say, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. As always, it's a pleasure. We'll be back tomorrow with more uh, content uh, with this team and hopefully we can explore it a bit more and hopefully we have the opportunity to bring that combo on and do a little bit more work with it and change my mind a little bit on how useful it can be in this format. Have a great day, morning, noon or night, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are, and I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, my friends, take care.